All right, all right. Settle down now, class. Settle down. Jimmy, quit picking your nose. Isaac, wake up. Mr. Brardy, you look beautiful today. But where do we begin? Good question. Any of you lot remember what fission and fusion were from chemistry? Of course not, and me neither. Who retains knowledge from school anyway? Let's get the basics down, right? Fission is defined as the splitting of the nucleus of an atom into the nuclei of lighter atoms, accompanied by the release of energy. Basically, this is like a unisex parent popping out two kids, and those two kids popping out two kids of their own, and so forth. This release of energy is like child support the original parent pays when popping out two kids. This energy is called the reaction's mass defect. To illustrate this sudden burst of energy, we hired two hobos to set themselves on fire. Yeah. Now that you've seen the visual side of things, here's a numerical example. Let's take a single isotope of oxygen with 16 nucleons, 8 of them protons and 8 of them neutrons. As you can see by our beautifully constructed slide, the mass of the individual nucleon is different than the mass of the oxygen atom by negative 2.04 times 10 to the negative 11th kilograms. You may ask yourself, but where did it go, you beautiful man? Well, I'll tell you, my thirsty pupil. This is that mass defect stuff I was talking about earlier. This is the mass that gets converted into energy. It does so through an infamous equation given to us by Albert Einstein called the mass energy equivalence formula, or in other words, E equals mc squared. Not only does this make mass and energy interchangeable, this also simplifies an otherwise complex law of physics, simple enough for even beginners to learn. Now let's put that expelled energy into a mole for unit purposes and put that into Einstein's equation. That would yield a tremendous 1.2 terajoules of energy. Putting that into perspective, to get the same amount from coal, you would have to burn an immense 420 metric tons of coal. The most infamous practical use of this is the fission-based atomic bombs dropped during World War II. The bombs essentially jammed two different pieces of uranium-235s into each other to cause a fission reaction, which in turn would unleash an uncontrolled chain reaction capable of massive destruction. It's time for McDonald's all-day breakfast. Breakfast! The sun's core is a natural fusion reactor. Before the sun formed, it was a cloud of gas mostly made of hydrogen and some helium. At some point, the cloud became so massive that gravity caused it to collapse on itself and formed a star. Numerous collisions in the core of the sun freed electrons from ions, forming a plasma state. Fusion began in the sun when collisions between ions became so frequent that the ions got close enough to fuse together. They tried to get atoms close enough by maximizing the number of ions in a small region and the amount of time that they stay close together. In order to do that, reactors get heated to temperatures much hotter than the core of the sun, which converts hydrogen gas into a hydrogen plasma. Strong magnetic fields or high-powered lasers then define the plasma into a small controllable region where fusion can happen. Fission bombs worked, but they weren't very efficient. It didn't- Hey! Oh, what's up, man? Is that good? Is that good? 
at extremely high temperatures, the nuclei of hydrogen isotopes, deuterium and tritium, can really fuse, releasing enormous amounts of energy in the process. Weapons that take advantage of this process are known as fusion bombs, thermonuclear bombs, or hydrogen bombs. Fusion bombs have higher kiloton yields and greater efficiencies than fusion bombs, but they present some problems they must solve. Deuterium and tritium, the fuels for fusion, are both gases which are hard to store. Tritium is in short supply and has a short half-life. Fuel in the bomb has to be continuously replenished. Deuterium or tritium has to be highly compressed at high temperatures to initiate the fusion reaction. To conclude with my point, Nuclear fusion and nuclear fission are different types of reactions that release energy due to the presence of high-powered atomic bonds between particles found with a nucleus and fission an atomic is split into two or more lighter atoms. Or lighter atoms. If you like pina colada